Aloha and welcome back to the Puna Strong Virtual Resource Fair. We're so glad to have you join us once again for this special track. And we're glad to welcome Bay Clinic uh, to this part of the presentation. We have Marcy Saking uh, from Bay Clinic as well as uh, Shailin Manguel Diamor. So thank you both for joining us today. Marcy is a graduate of Kamehameha Schools. Uh, she earned her BA from the College of Idaho and her MA from Central Michigan University. With 25 years in education in the nonprofit sector, her passion lies in building capacity through partnerships and education in the community. And Shays uh, has been dedicated to serving our East Hawaii community. She engages with and connects individuals and families to resources in the community that they may qualify. For. She guides individuals to engagement in their plan of care and is identified as a trusted community member within the Bay Clinic organization. So thank you both so much for joining us today. And I'll turn it right over to you, Marcy. Hi, thank you very much, Keith. Um, aloha, my kako, everyone. My name is Marcy Saking, as Keith mentioned. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at Bay Clinic. You know, I just want to um, mahalo, first of all, um, Puna Strong for allowing us to be part of this, this adventure, if you will, as, as we journey into um, virtual uh, and online platforms. Um, you know, on behalf of Bay and Dr. Kimo Alameda, our CEO, I just want to um, extend our um, aloha and mahalo for the support in the community. And this along with our board of directors, our staff, and and most importantly, those we serve are patients. So um, it's a pleasure to be here and um, give you a little bit of background on Bay Clinic. Um, we've been serving uh, the healthcare needs of East Hawaii for 35 years, over 35 years. And we have patients residing from Hawaiian Ocean View Estates, way south of us, as well as Na'alehu, uh, the Puna area, Pahua, Kia'au, and in Hilo. Um, you know, it's like, where are all of our big clinics? Well, I'm sure you've seen them in the community. I'll start with the Puna area. Uh, we have a clinic in Pahua. Uh, we also have uh, our Pahua Women's and Children Clinic located just up the hill from that. In Kia'au, we have our Kia'au Family Clinic, which also includes our, our dental clinic within that uh, specific clinic. We have, uh, as I mentioned, a uh, Na'alehu, a clinic in Ka'u. And in Hilo, we have a Hilo family clinic, which includes pediatrics. We also have a separate Hilo pediatrics clinic and the Hilo women's clinic, Hilo dental clinic, and a Wailuku family health clinic, which right now is actually our COVID clinic where you can get vaccines and, and testing that's near the Wailuku River. Um, so we're kind of spread out in East Hawaii. Um, you know, the folks that we serve here, you know, again, spans East Hawaii completely. Uh, Bay Clinic serves about 20,000 patients each year. And um, we accept all patients, regardless of the ability to pay. Um, we accept all insurances, the underinsured, uh, uninsured, um, and, and, and pretty much any other um, form of insurance that you have. And you don't have to have insurance, by the way. So anyone can uh, receive the services here at Bay Clinic. Uh, recently, and I think Shay will be talking about this, you know, we have this kind of slogan, Bay would go, um, pack up everything and, and really get out into the community and, and serve, serve our, our patients that um, would... Un be unable to come into the clinics. And one good example of that is we all journeyed out to Milali'i and I, I, I'm, I'll let maybe Shay explain that, but you know, Milali'i is the southernmost fishing village, probably the last fishing village in the state of Hawaii. And um, we literally took generators, um, everything we did like a pop-up clinic for the residents right there in Milali'i. Um, we've done, clinics in Hawaiian Ocean View um, estates. We've done several in Pahoa at Maku'u uh, Farmer's Market as well. So it's, it's kind of like we go out into the community as well as having our clinics available. Um, you know, Bay Clinic is the second largest clinic in the state. Um, Waianae Comprehensive on the island of Oahu is the first. I mean, they're, they're pretty large there, but we're kind of catching up. 
Um, we offer all kinds of comprehensive health care for our patients and our island community, and um, such as pharmacy, behavioral health, um, cancer screening services. As I mentioned, we have a COVID clinic. We offer dental services. Um, pretty, a pretty comprehensive um, list of things, uh, pediatrics, prenatal care, tobacco cessation. Uh, we do well child visits and a WIC program. And we also have a mobile health unit. I think Shay will be also expanding on that shortly. Um, you know, in addition to the comprehensive health care that we offer our community. One thing that we've been focusing on, and this is where Shay comes in, I would say over the last seven months, is we're really trying to um, enhance and build our um, Bay Clinic outreach program. And, um, you know, it, I, I met Shay, by the way, I've only been here since February, but she was one of the first people I met. And I was, I was just taken by her um, dedication and her passion and compassion for being in the community and working uh, in, with, in the street, you know, street medicine and, and shelter. Um, and, and, and this is where she come in, comes in. So I asked her to co-present with me because um, this is a really exciting program that we have here at Bay. And um, it's, it's been a, an honor and a pleasure to work along Shay and her team. And this is where I kind of want to hand off the presentation to her so she can share all the great things that um, her team and the community outreach workers um, are doing here um, in East Hawaii. So Shay, I'm passing the baton to you. <laughs> Thank you, Marcy. Thank you, Pete, for having us. Can we go ahead and pull up that presentation? I wanna go ahead and show everyone some of the work that we've been able to do with our big clinic outreach program. All right, thank you. Okay, so um, thank you, thank you everyone for um, for attending the Puna Virtual Resource Fair. I wanna discuss a little bit about um, this outreach program that Big Clinic has piloted. Um, so we are actually, um, there's a few programs in this, um, excuse me, there's a few events in this program um, that we've been doing. So our outreach program's been consisting of street medicine outings, shelter medicine, as well as street outreach by Bay Clinic's community health workers. We go to the next. So our street medicine outing, um, every Monday we go out into the community. Our outreach team consists of a physician, nurse, as well as two community health workers. We go out into the community from eight in the morning to 2 p.m. Um, majority of the time, we can be found in the Hilo area. We go out and we find unsheltered individuals and we provide medical attention to them. Um, it basically be a normal doctor's appointment except out in the street rather than in the clinic. Um, additional services that our community health workers usually provide during those outings is assistance with applying uninsured individuals with Medicaid benefits, um, or if they're in need of um, any SNAP or financial benefits, we assist in um, application process and follow up until we get a um, until we get a response to see if they're approved. We also do plan of care coordination, so that would be where we would see you for an office visit or more so a street visit. And our community health workers will be able to identify any barriers or any health plans that the doctor may have in store or any recommendations. And we help you with the process of being able to achieve those health goals. Another thing we do is um, we do provide patient advocacy as well as support. So in the event you may not understand, um, say for example, what the physician is Kind of say or I'm not sure how to go about with um, getting to places or you just need resources, 
then our community health workers will be there by your side to assist and help you throughout the process. We also do additional referrals to agencies. So that would be, um, when we see unsheltered, that would be more so for um, homeless agencies. So for example, Hope Services Hawaii, um, we usually help to refer interested individuals to Hope Services to be able to get a, um, a caseworker, for example, and try to get off of the street and into a shelter. Um, or if they may qualify for uh, a housing voucher, then you can make a direct referral for them to possibly get a housing voucher to be able to get their own place. Um, another thing we do is we do distribute um, care kits. So our care kits include a, um, it's a first aid kit, comes with a code pack, a mask and glove pack, as well as an eight ounce of antibacterial soap and Germex. And then we also have dental hygiene kits that we usually pass out, which includes um, dental floss, a toothbrush, as well as a travel-sized toothpaste. We also provide feminine products as well, and that's a courtesy from the Mountain Movement Hawaii. So that will include um, in pads, tampons, sanitary products for women. So our next um, event that we have in our outreach program is our shelter medicine. So our shelter medicine um, is where we utilize our Bay Clinic mobile health unit. So we usually um, set up at the Hope Services Keolaho Shelter, also known as KES, and that's located at 34 Rainbow Drive. So we usually will have this event every other Tuesday from 8 in the morning to 2 p.m. We offer primary care appointments as well as behavioral health appointments. And with this, we also have um, we also have with us that attends clinical labs Hawaii. So in the events, um, somebody needs to get their labs done or they have an outstanding order for lab work, then they have the opportunity to get their blood draw there and then we can receive results and then pass the results along back to the patient. So with the shelter medicine event, this is more, um, more focused on sheltered residents. So say Hope Services, um, it is posted at the Hope Services shelter. So priority does go to the sheltered residents um, in the Hope Services shelters or any unsheltered individuals. And if we do have availability, I would recommend maybe contacting our outreach, um, our community health worker group lines, our outreach line to inquire on any possible availability that we may have left prior to the event. We also have our community health workers who assist in, um, again, applying for Medicaid for any uninsured individuals, any SNAP or TANF benefits, and then the patient advocacy and support in the event our patient may not feel comfortable with going into the doctor's appointment alone, we can always you know, let them know like, hey, if you want us to attend with you, we can always be with you during the appointment. And then we also do the plan of care coordination. So in the event the patient has, um, if the doctor has recommendations, we help to follow up with the patient and guide the patient through the process of achieving their health goals. And that is also where we distribute the care kits, the dental, as well as the feminine products. So our street outreach, um, street outreach we usually conduct on um, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. So in these cases, we have two community health workers. We go out into the community and we connect individuals who are big clinic patients, individuals who don't have a PCP, or people who, um, who have big clinic as a PCP but just have not seen us in maybe over five years. And we reconnect them to the healthcare system. So on those days, our community health workers will usually assist community members with scheduling appointments. So it can be inclusive to medical, behavioral health, women's appointments, and then along with dental. We also assist the community in applying for Medicaid at that time. 
along with the um, other benefits that they may be in need of. And we also refer them to um, additional services. So a lot of times, um, especially with our unsheltered and our sheltered population, they may not have um, they may not have their birth certificate or their social security card or their valid picture ID. So um, that that can be a huge barrier to a lot of um, to to receive a lot of services from other agencies. So that's that's a big thing that we've been grateful to assist other people with is gaining their documents back or you know replacing it, getting a duplicate. Because a lot of times um, the biggest thing that we came across is people really just aren't sure of what resources are out there. So it feels really good to be able to get everyone connected and let them know like, hey, there is, there's this, there's that. There's a lot of things that can help people. And we also um, can provide so additional resources. So that would be um, if someone is in need of food, we can at least give them the food basket schedule. There's um, soup kitchens available for breakfast, lunch, dinner. And there's also um, where they can pick up, where they can pick up like um, food bags of groceries just so they can get some food. And we also pass out, um, say if they need to shower, then we, we provide them the mobile shower unit schedule, the HEA, HEA. So that's with Project Vision Hawaii. And then um, of course the Helion bus schedule in the event they need. Um, it's more so with the additional resources um, the community health workers with Faith Clinic, um, we usually identify the barriers based upon the barriers that we're presented is what we work with to be able to provide the individual with the resource that they may qualify for. So even if we may not know offhand um, maybe what it is that they need, we'll always do the research to try and see what there is out there that the individual may qualify for. And we are accepting referrals. So in the event any of you do have any referrals that you'd like to provide, feel free to contact our community health worker group line at 808-934-3223. And then you can request a referral form. One of our community health workers will be able to get that to you. It would either be email, fax, or we can arrange to pick up or drop off, however is best for the situation. Thank you. Thank you, Shay. Um, you know, there's a lot to be said about our community health workers who really get out um, in, in the streets and, and, and again, go where our unsheltered um, community members are and, and offer services. Um, in fact, you know, I, I might go back to Shay and have her share um, what's going on right now um, at Mohel Park here in Hilo, how um, you know, initially that's kind of was a place that the uh, they were set up for clinic, and 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 now the consistency of of the clinic being held there, um, folks know when to go out and, and seek help. So um, it, it it has created you know like like a pattern or um, a, a venue, if you will for our, our, our unsheltered um, community members to come and, and reach out for health care. So um, I just wanted to highlight that as well. And Shay, maybe if you can share a little bit more about that before I, I share the contact information that's on the screen. Yes, yes, of course. So um, since we've actually piloted the street medicine program, we've been very consistent with going out and advertising, letting everyone that we talk to know that we're out every Monday. So anytime you need us, look for our outreach vehicle, you know, flag us down, we'll stop. Um, so every Monday, it's been consistent that every, um, everyone sees us, the unsheltered will see us. And um, I would say right now, the biggest area that we, um, the, the biggest area that we have People, um, it's like a what do you call those? It's like a like a common area that people will come to see us at is the Kalapawa Park. So um, usually on Mondays when we get there, there's at least a few people, you know, a couple of people, and just with our team being in process of um, helping that 
person to fill out any paperwork or just getting them on the schedule and getting them checked in. We have about, about seven more walking and inquiring, hey, um, can you guys help me with this? Or, you know, they have a lot of wounds. So right now, Kalakaua Park is, um, that's a, a, the biggest common area, biggest common ground for the individuals to find us at. The majority of our time is actually spent at Kalakaua Park on Mondays, <laughs> just because that's the common area. That's awesome. My bad. For some reason, I thought I was Mohel Park. <laughs> no, not at all. It actually, you know, now that you mentioned Mohel, it's actually that that's a common area for them. But as for once our team started doing street medicine, because I mean, unfortunately, HPD does, you know, let people know that they're unable to um, be at the, you know, on the property or loiter around. So everybody ends up scattering. But that's kind of what's been happening. So um, really right now, the best place um, that they can find to kind of just to sit down it is it's Kalakaua Park right now. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you, Shay. So you know, if anyone um, you know attending this virtual conference wants to contact us here at Bay, you know, our phone number is really simple, 808. Don't forget you need the 808 now that they changed the rules here on us. 333-3600. Um, that is our main line. Um, you know, we do get kind of busy. Don't give up. We, we have folks um, picking up the phones and, and um, setting up appointments and guiding you to where you need to be. Uh, you can also email us at media at bayclinic.org. You can surely visit our website. I apologize, I failed to put that on here, but it's uh, real easy. Bayclinic.org, <laughs> www.bayclinic.org. And that's another um, resource that you can use to reach out and learn more about Bay Clinic. So, um, that's all we have to share right now, Keith. Not sure if you want to have a conversation um, any further at this point in time. Yeah. Uh, are you able to stop sharing the screen? Yeah, I'm going to do it like right now. Okay. <laughs> all right. Then we'll just edit that part right out. Okay. So thank you both so much for that wonderful presentation. We do have a few questions for you. Um, so I know I saw down at the bottom of your uh, last slide that you were presenting that you are on social media such as Facebook, Instagram, uh, and YouTube. What kind of resources are available on, on your social media platforms? So on the social media platform, it's mostly announcing um, events, um, updating. You know, we have been really, really busy at our COVID clinic. We've We've actually, you know, have vaccine over 9,000 folks since um, January. And, and, and that social media platform is just um, primarily right now to share where our clinics are in the community um, and, and what's going on surrounding um, COVID. Um, and, you know, I'm a Kupuna, so I'm like not hip on social media platforms, but we have someone here in house who takes care of all of that. and and, and Basically, it's just updating it with the activities and the events. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, so if anybody's looking for information on how to get in touch with you, they can certainly go to any of those sites. Absolutely, uh, yes. Okay, Absolutely. perfect. And uh, I saw, so speaking of COVID and the COVID clinics that you guys are doing, one of the things that I saw, uh, at least earlier this year, I don't know if you're still doing it, but for anybody that was trying to get a vaccination, you actually had some gift cards available to help make that a little bit easier. Are you still doing that? No, well, well we've stopped as of last week, um, but you know, uh, you were very fortunate to, to get some uh, grant monies where we could offer an incentive such as that. Um, and, and, you know, when we, we as a state and an island community um, saw the need to increase vaccinations for, for our, our community, um, you know, CEO Kimo Alameda thought, hey, you know, what a great way to um, get people in and get shots to the arm. And it, it was actually, uh, you know, um, it, twofold, you know, you're getting your vaccine, but, but the gift cards were, were to go and buy food, you know, to, um, 
uh, or, or uh, restaurants and uh, Safeway, you know, and, and I have to share, I have to share a good story. We had an um, older gentleman come in and, um, well, he came in to get his vaccine, but he also said he didn't have enough money to go shopping for food. And he was just um, overwhelmingly grateful. And we, we gave him like a hundred dollars Safeway card. Well, you get $50 gift card when you come in for the first shot and then it incentivizes you to come for the second one. So you get another gift card and that's how you get the total hundred dollar gift card. So, um, you know, it's, it's stories like that. So um, yeah, you know, it, I think people initially thought it was like a gimmick to get people in, but actually it was to, you know, uh, build capacity to the people in the community by offering them ways to, to get food and, and to access that. So very successful. Um, and unfortunately, we stopped last week, um, but uh, and, and hopefully folks still come in and get vaccines regardless of the incentive. But yeah, we, we were very, very pleased with that whole program. I'm so glad it was so successful that you actually ran out of money to keep doing it. So that's, that's really exactly cool. what happened. <laughs> 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 that is such a great program. So congratulations on that. And thank you uh, for taking the initiative to, to do something that's so meaningful for the community and for the people that need uh, the extra support during these times, because it's been a hard uh, 20, 22 months for a while. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, for people who uh, might be uh, looking for maybe some pharmacy help. I saw that was one of the services that you guys are able to provide. Can you explain a little bit about uh, what services your pharmacy is able to have and how easy it is to access any of those or is there mail-in services? How does your pharmacy program work? So our farm, well, we have an in-house pharmacy right in the Kiao clinic. However, we also have contracts with almost all of the pharmacies in town. So Safeway, um, Longs, which is now CVS, um, Target. Um, I, I think those are like the three guys, three main pharmacies now here in town because CVS is part of Longs. But um, so our Bay Clinic patients can, can get their prescriptions filled at these pharmacies. So it's not just you know, centralized where you have to go to the Kiao clinic. However, if you're there, you can fill your, your prescription there. But the beauty of it is now um, we have um, partnerships with the other pharmacies within the community. So access to your prescriptions is greater now. Um, and, and I think that's a huge benefit. Definitely. Uh, and then for a lot of people, uh, one of the things that I found challenging when I moved here to Hawaii was finding access to a primary care physician. Is that something that you all are able to help people in the community with? Absolutely. That, that's, that's primarily why we're here. Um, and, and each of the clinics do have multiple physicians that they can, that can become your, your, your primary care physician, you know, with the caveat that, um, you know, physicians might not be at work one day, but nonetheless, someone would always be there to care for the patients who come in. Um, Shay, you may want to expand on that a little more. Um, you know, and, and I, you know, you can share what Dr. Weiner does in the clinic, as well as his role in the community, because that, that's a perfect example of um, what our providers do. So with our outreach program, for example, um, our physician who's, um, who's with us, so he's dedicating his um, two days out of the week to our outreach program to provide um, medical care, so primary care services. Um, Dr. Weiner also works out of the Hilo Family Health Center um, on the days that he is not in the clinic. So he works out of the clinic three days and dedicates two days to our outreach program, to being in the streets and providing medical care. And I do wanna touch base with the, um, onto your question because Bay Clinic is a um, PCP, so primary care office. So we accept all patients. Um, we're always accepting patients and regardless if we may not have um, a provider be with us no longer, where like Marcy said, we're 
always going to have somebody there to see you. So that's one of the biggest things that I um, that I'm grateful for with the clinic is no matter if it's um, you know just just one single um, private practice, for example, with the clinic with the amount of physicians that we have available, even if your PCP that you that you usually see may not be in office that day of your appointment, we can always have somebody else still see you for that concern and still follow up as how would that provider that you were supposed to. So usually our physicians in the clinic are really good at, um, at knowing the patient's history or knowing kind of what they're coming in for. They, they come ahead of time and you know, look at what's going on so they can better serve the patient. That, that was a perfect example. And that's kind of why I, I alluded to that because you know, when, when Dr. Weiner is out um, of the clinic and, and doing his, his street medicine and shelter medicine, you know, one of his patients could come in on those days and we're not going to say, no, can't come in, Dr. Weiner's not here. You know, we will schedule them with, with a, a provider who is in clinic to assure that they get that, that access to care. So um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. That is, that's wonderful. And it, I know uh, being a recent resident here about four years now, how challenging that is, but to have a consistent place that uh, I'm able to go whenever I need help is really wonderful. Whether my doctor's there or not, you guys are there to help. So thank you for that. And um, one of the other questions I have is I saw that you guys had a, a pediatrics um, as well. What are some of the biggest issues facing the Keiki in our community and what services do you guys have available through your pediatrics program? So we have pediatrics in Pahoa. We have um, in, at the Hilo Clinic. Oh, we also have in, in Keau, yeah. Um, and also we have a whole separate uh, kind of standalone pediatrics here in Hilo um, at our um, administration office. And with regards to challenges, I think I, I, I'd like to use most, you know, most recently, you know, due to COVID, you know, the, the fact that our keiki, you know, are unable to get vaccinated um, and, and the challenges with that as a parent, um, the services that we offer are, you know, your, uh, I'll start with prenatal care because it starts with that first. Um, we also do um, well child visits will do uh, immunizations that the kids need to have. And uh, we also do family planning. That's like the, the first thing of that here before you get to all of that other stuff. But um, WIC program, WIC is for our, our, our mothers um, who might need assistance and, and we have that available as well. So I think again, that comprehensive support for our families, our, our, our moms, dads, and, and the cake is something that we offer in all of our clinics. And by the way, Dr. D'Angelo, um, he is a pediatrician here in the Hilo Pediatrics. He is also a um, um, cardiac, uh, he does uh, echocardiograms. So he's a cardiologist, pediatric cardiologist. Thank you. Sometimes it's a mouthful to say, but... <laughs> <laughs> he's a, yeah, he's a pediatric cardiologist, so he is able to um, see patients in, in that capacity. So I want to I want to base a little bit more on what Marcy mentioned with our services, especially with the uh, family planning pediatrics. So I really think that's one of the greatest things too is um, down from getting a pregnancy test, for example. You know, going into the family planning, okay, getting set up with your whip when you come from pregnancy. You know, we have, a good clinic provides all the steps to be able to get to a well child visit. <laughs> you know, so it's great. It's great. The mothers can have the, um, an OBGYN, so an obstetrician with big clinic. So just with the big clinic services alone is where we can provide care throughout the entire way from beginning to start, um, excuse me, beginning to end. That's, Thank you, Sharon. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for expanding on that a little bit more. Um, with all of the different uh, programs that you offer, you also provide the behavioral health programs. Um, with that, 
Uh, who are those behavioral health programs for and what kind of services are available in there? Thank you. Thank you for asking that question. Um, you know, behavioral health has been, I, I don't want to call it popular, but one of our busiest uh, pieces of what we do here at Bay. And, and you know, Keith, I, I, I'm sure you realize, and, and, and so does everyone else in our community, in, in the country for that matter, that, you know, the onset of COVID, um, just the stress of what has been transpiring over the last year and a half. Um, we, we've seen a, a huge increased need for behavioral health um, uh, care. Um, and interestingly enough, you know, during COVID, we started to implement um, telehealth, right? Because people couldn't come into the clinics. And um, behavioral health here at Bay Clinic has taken that to like a whole other level. I believe neither all... I believe almost all of the patients that they see right now is via telehealth. And, and that allows for that privacy, um, you know, access um, and, and, and really reaching out and, and, and allowing the patient to, um, to, to have that connection with their provider, with their doc, with their social worker in their space. Um, you know, it's not to say that they can't still come into the clinic. I, they do, but um, I, I, I'm, I think we're very proud, Kim, and I'm very proud of our behavioral health program um, and, and the fact that they're really utilizing um, this platform with telehealth to reach out and afford uh, the care and the access for those who need it. Um, so, you know, we do see a cross-section of patients. You know, I, I touched upon COVID uh, uh, the stress factor, things coming in, and it just runs the gamut uh, with regards to the, the kinds of patients that we see. But I, I feel, you know, we have a very, very strong behavioral health program here at Bay. And, you know, I, again, you know, I've been here since February. Shay's been here longer than me. Um, you know, I'm going to, you know, bounce back to her if she wants to say anything or supplement what I've said. Um, and, and then again, she's in the community too. So, you know, um, I'm sure she's sending referrals into our behavior health um, department as well. So Shay, do you want to share a little bit about uh, what's been going on with you and your team? Yeah, yeah. So with our outreach program, um, we have a behavioral health provider who also dedicates her time to the shelter medicine. So um, that is Rachel Cruz. Um, she has her CSAT. She also goes by La Hela. And, um, you know, having behavioral health with the outreach program has been, um, man, that's been a huge additive, a huge resource because a lot of the, um, a lot of the clients that we see or the clientele that we come in, um, come in contact with is, um, you know, they, they're in need of the services. Um, they, or they may also have, um, say, legal obligations, and they need to find the behavioral health, um, the service to be able to, to maintain benefits, you know? So with the behavioral health provider, um, with our outreach program, it's, it's, it's been huge. And to be honest, there's a lot of things that's always subject to change. And we may just be expanding the behavioral health components in the outreach program. You know, so it's it's looking really great, a lot of success. That's wonderful. And thank you for bringing up telehealth, Marcy, uh, because I think that that's something that probably everybody who's watching this uh, is probably familiar with how to, you know, get online, able to access platforms such as this that we're on today. But for those people who might not be as technologically savvy as our attendees, um, do they need any special equipment in order to be a part of a telehealth? Do they need to have laptops or iPads or um, extra special equipment to be able to access those services? Um, how does that work? So I just tried to show you my cell phone because basically that's the, the I believe, the highest mode of um, uh, device that's being used. Um, so yeah, you could have an iPad, a laptop, but you can also use your iPhone. And um, I think that that's the beauty of, of telehealth um, that, that we're seeing. You know, uh, the, the medical side, 
uh, you know, during COVID, we did we did see a spike in use, but for some some reason, people prefer just to walk into the doctor's office and sit down and talk story. Yeah. So um, while I, while we do see a little bit of telehealth going on on the on the medical side, um, again, you know, behavioral health is like like out the door. I mean, that's their true method of reaching out to the patients. So we're we're very very um, proud of that, and and we'll continue to you know, promote and suggest that as well as clinic visits. Um, and I just wanted to also share about Lahela that um, um, Shay had mentioned, you know, one thing that Lahela is trained in is Ho'oponopono, which, which is, you know, the Hawaiian um, method or practice of um, trying to resolve problems and, um, and, and we're weaving that in, into the care as well. And, and Lahela has, um, really risen to the top in, in offering that. Uh, so that, that's another thing that that's part of what we do here at Bay. What a wonderful program. And with uh, telehealth, is it something that's appropriate for, I know you said you talked about it with um, some of the clinical side, but can anybody have anything that's going on? Like maybe I have a lump on my neck. Is that an appropriate use of telehealth or is that something I should really come in to the office for? So as I'm not a physician, <laughs> I think the best thing to do is, uh, you know, that that um, referral in and and sharing your your symptoms and and your problems first. And I I believe from there our team would decide if telehealth is appropriate or not. You know, a lot of times um, you do need to physically come in in order for the physician to do an exam. So again, that really. That really takes place in, in the initial triage, if you will, um, before the patient uh, either does telehealth or, or is asked to come in physically. Perfect. So if anybody has any questions, the first step is to contact you guys and you'll figure out whether telehealth is appropriate or if that's something they should come in to visit for. Exactly. I mean, I, I, think, I think it's just really cool these days that we have options in getting health care, that you don't have to drive to a clinic or find a ride to the clinic that you have the option, if possible, to utilize telehealth to seek your, your medical and your behavioral health care. So can't do dental via telehealth, <laughs> but everything else you can. <laughs> oh, I wish I could do the dentist via telehealth. I know, That's I hate so dentists. Nice. Sorry, no offense. <laughs> it's like, can you drill me virtually? I'll be fine. <laughs> right. I think maybe I definitely want the Novocaine for that either way. <laughs> But Shay, you uh, talking about kind of the referrals earlier, um, you had said that for the street health program, that uh, it re where you go really depends on the referrals that you're getting. Is that something that people are able to self-refer for or are they able to refer somebody, maybe a family member or a friend uh, that they see that's on the streets and is needing those help? How, how does that work and how do people make that kind of a referral? Well, Keith, there's actually um, that's all the above. So, Anyone can make the referral for anyone. Um, the referral form that we have at this time, in mind it is subject to change, but it's a very simple form that specifies, um, say your name, for example, it, it identifies um, the name of the person who is in need of the service, what service they're looking to see, and who is the referring person or agency. So it's, um, it's really just a standard referral form that we're using right now. And do you need to be a doctor to make that referral or can anybody do it? So that can actually, I believe it can be for, um, for anyone. So like I said, subject to change, um, say it depends on, um, let's say the program, for example. So if, if, if there is, um, let's say a bypasser, um, passes by an unsheltered individual in the street and they uh, think that, hey, the person needs medical attention. Oh, I know Big Clinic has an outreach program, but they have street medicine. Boom, you get a referral form just by making an inquiry and they can identify on the form maybe a description of the person, the location of the person, and we make contact with that person for further details. And then from there, our outreach program will then coordinate to go out and find that person and do an inquiry if they're in need of any medical attention or any services. 
Wow, that's really wonderful. So it's really kind of a, if you see something, say something kind of a program. Right, you don't right. have to have any special credentials to make that referral. Yeah, I think I think that's that's the beauty of, of, of what she and her team are doing right now, Keith, is, you know, when you hear a referral, referral form, you, you think it needs to come from a doctor, a nurse, or some community organization, but it's really... Um, affording our community to help everyone as a whole and and kind of that's kind of sometimes your kuleana ya yeah, to to if you see someone that needs help um i mean some people will just walk by but um if you know that that they will take a referral you don't have to be a doctor to make a referral um that's the first step in in a, a affording that person that kind of health care and and care coordination because you know our unsheltered folks or folks that we see in a community who are just um, in the streets for, for whatever reason, they need to have that kind of wraparound care. Um, you know, healthcare is, is just one piece of, of the kind of care that they're needing. They, they, they might need social services, they may need food, um, you know, assistance with, you know, getting their documents. So it's really, it, it's, and I, I could keep saying wraparound because it really is. Um, and, and that's where shape folks come in, you know, it really starts that, um, that care coordination, you know, some of us have families, you know, like if I get sick, I have my ohana to take care of me, you know, a lot of these people don't have that on the streets. And so th this is where, um, you know, Shay, her team, and, um, and that compassion comes in um, to, to, to afford that kind of care. That is wonderful. <laughs> that is wonderful. And I know that uh, Shay, you mentioned it earlier that if, but if you could just kind of reiterate it so that people make sure that they heard it. Um, you talked about that if anybody has any kind of challenges that you guys have a support staff to be able to help them work through that. Can you go over that one more time? Yes, yes. So um, I kind of want to just make sure everybody keeps in mind that every person is different. Every person has a different situation. And what really, um, what we've really been able to focus on is um, having that one-on-one -on -one discussion, really just a talk story discussion with the people, with the community. And um, just based off of talking stories, you can identify, uh, you know, what they're needing help with. So um, I'm trying to think of an example. And let's say, um, let's say I had this, um, I had this one gentleman. So this is when I um, actually had first started um, with uh, piloting of this program. And I had gone out into the community with, um, I was doing street outreach. It was with one of my um, other community health workers. And we are at the Bay Clinic, I'm um, excuse me, at the Bay Frank soccer field. And we come across this, um, this gentleman, you can, you, can, you can tell he's experiencing homelessness. He's, he's out of his van and um, he has all of his belongings packed in the van. And um, we do an approach, we introduce ourselves, what we do, who we are, and um, we see if he's interested in services. So once they express interest is when we're um, going to identify more. Um, so we had him do, um, we, we basically asked him basic questions on um, his finances, um, if he has his documents, if he's needing any medical attention. Um, if there's anything that we may be able to help him with. And the biggest thing that he expressed was, um, was housing. So he had actually been in the streets for, I believe it was eight years, he said, eight years. And um, he, he had social security. I believe he had social security income. And he just couldn't make enough to, um, to get a place. So what had happened was, um, we basically, uh, um, my team, we ended up following this individual. So we, one, got him in for an appointment just to, you know, make sure he's established. Um, he was an established patient, but just to basically do an overall checkup, like a physical. And then um, we ended up going into the referring to social services. So that is where Hope Services came in and my team did a referral. Um, it's basically just a uh, connect to them saying, hey, I got this person. He's located here. Give him his name, his information. 
he's expressing interest in your services. Can any of your outreach team reach out to him and um, maybe do an assessment? So um, that's what happened and that's what they did. Hope Services was able to help with um, getting their assessment, their paperwork's all in order. And then um, of course they provide food, they help to provide food to the people and um, anything else that they can offer too. And this one individual, um, so they will, with Hope Services, the individuals are given the option, are you interested in shelter or not? This one was not interested in shelter. He was very comfortable with where he was at in his van with his belongings. He could go wherever he wanted to when he wanted to. And um, yeah, I would say we worked with him for about, I want to say uh, three to five months estimated. And just within that time frame, um, you know, being his support and meeting with him regularly, so monthly meeting with him and helping him with any paperwork. He was actually able to get approved for a place. And mind you, he did not, I believe he did not have a, a housing voucher and um, he helped him do a housing application. And he got a phone call one day, he got approved and his rent was only $300 for you know, a beautiful place. I was, you know, I, um, he notified me the day after he got the, the notice that he got approved for the place and he could move in on this date. And so, um, you know, we do the whole congratulations still and he, um, you know, of course, gratitude, appreciation for the services. And um, it's more so, you know, really the support. I think the biggest thing with the outreach program is the, the support that we provide, you know, um, maintain, maintaining contact and rapport with, with the people. Um, that's really what people need is, you know, it, without rapport, there's really, it's, it's hard to help someone. You know, so I, that's one thing I really stress of this is, is building a connection with the people we're working with, making sure that we have a team that has a focus on compassion, people who really, who really want to help other people. Uh, but, you know, with that one individual, um, I, um, myself and my team, we ended up um, going to his, going to his place and kind of just, you know, letting him know like, hey, like, that's, you know, it's, it, you got your own place. It's, it's awesome. You know, he, he, it was a blessing. Uh, to, to, to kind of sum it up, it was a, a, a huge blessing. You know, he, he, it was something that he just wasn't expecting. And for us to be able to, um, to witness it, it was, it, I was, I myself was just very fortunate to be able to be a part of something like that, to be able to make a difference to somebody. You know, that was, um, that was a huge motivation streak for me because it made me, you know, it made me think like, um, you know, this isn't the only one. This isn't the only person that's out there who needs this, you know? So uh, I'm, I'm very grateful and fortunate for the program, for the people, for the community. That's really great. And what a great example of uh, how the social services programs really kind of uh, flexes and fluctuates with the person that you're there to help. Because I think that there's kind of this maybe stigma about social workers that they're going to come in and upend your life and turn everything over. But that story is such a beautiful example of how uh, somebody who's in living out of a van, maybe uh, non-traditional housing, uh, but they don't want to go into traditional housing at that, like at the moment that they're asked and they're like, no, they're going to force me into it. But it was really, no, we'll, we'll help you along the way. If you ever want to change it, we can. So it's really great to see an example of a supportive program rather than somebody that's going to come in and upend your life and maybe force you into things that you don't want to be doing. So thanks for sharing that. And I know we're coming up on the end of our time. So I just want to say thank you both so much for your time today. And I want to turn it back over to Marcy for any uh, last closing moments. If there's a thought you want to leave <laughs> us with, or if you have uh, some contact information that you want to make sure that we uh, are aware of. I'll turn that over to you to wrap us all up. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Again, thank you so much for allowing us to share what we do here at Bay Clinic. You know, I, I just, I kind of wanted to tag on, you know, a final thought with, with Shay and what they're doing in the community. And, and that's the fact that it's very important to build trust. Um, you know, that's one thing I learned from this, this young lady when I first met her is, um, you know, you go out of the community, you, you got to take all your layers of judgment and, and what have. It's just got to go. Um, and, and then you start building that relationship, which leads to trust um, of the clients out in, you know, in, in the homeless, the street, 
street shelter people. Um, and, and then in time with that trust and relationship, you see the fruition of the work and the care coordination that's coming in with, with our team. And, and, and that's pretty much the same thing that we're trying to do. And we are in our clinics is, you know, please trust us and, and allow us to afford you that kind of care um, in, in the clinics that we have in here in East Hawaii. You know, we have over 200 staff here at Bay Clinic. There's all the people working for Bay. Um, and and they're, you know, our patients are our grandparents, our aunties, uncles, neighbors. And, and so we care, you know, we want to malama everyone. We want to take care of everyone. And, and that does come with, with trust, with building that relationship with um, your PCP and maybe your 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 fake PCP if he's out in the community. <laughs> but but nonetheless, I, I think the bottom line is we are here to serve our community um, and afford them that comprehensive health care um, in, in all aspects. And um, and I just appreciate the opportunity to do that. Um, you know, Kimo and I are from Hilo. We're we're local. Um, you know, we, we have this huge passion to um, make sure that we can afford access to care for everyone. Um, it doesn't, doesn't matter, you know, where you're from, what kind of background, you get money, you no more money. You know, we're here to, to um, allow you to have that kind of health care access. Um, again, you can call us at the 808-333-3600 and, you know, we'll get a clinic, we'll get you set up. You can visit our website at www.bayclinic.org. Um, you know, if you remember my name, you can call and ask for Marcy. I will help you myself. Um, Shay is the same one. I mean, she will take calls and she'll, we'll get you the help you need because we are here to help and serve you. So again, mahalo Keith, this opportunity and um, would love to um, take any further questions from your, from your audience moving forward. Mahalo. Right. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you, Shay. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And for those of you that are joining us in our next session, it will start at the top of the hour and we hope to see you there. Thank you so much. Aloha. Aloha. Don't shock us. <laughs>